for you. And what a great introduction, Maria. And I hope everyone else out there is keeping safe and well. Tough times for us all. And um, I think this lockdown is here to stay for a little bit longer, unfortunately. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's going for a long haul. So this new way of working, I think it's getting comfortable, but it's quite important. Um, so Maya, like, how are you working to keep the lights on for your 1 million content creators? Um, really good question. So to, for, for those of you out there who don't know a little, about, little bit about our company, we're TLNT Holdings and we've got three platforms underneath that, talenthouse.com, zupa.com and lo.co. And we have got across those communities around about 4 million members of which 1 million are creators. So when we talk about creators, we're talking about people who actually create creative content. So there could be photographers, filmmakers, designers, fashion designers, illustrators, anyone who's actually making content. And this kind of disaggregated community is in 200 markets and they rely very heavily as freelancers on a pipeline of briefs of work that they can actually work to and respond to, to actually earn income for. Um, these last few weeks, as you can imagine, have completely changed our business. We've had a number of big campaigns, Maria, being bumped out, cancelled, pushed, postponed, um, particularly campaigns when there was any form of physical activation or event. Because clearly you can't be sending people out to the opening of a Marriott hotel or to the store opening of an Adidas store. Of we were doing um, a collaboration with UEFA's around one of their big sponsoring brands. Clearly all the sporting activities are being pushed back. So there ain't nothing going on in that world at all. Um, so what we've learned over the last 12 years is that whilst creators really want to make money, obviously, what they're also very motivated by um, is inspiration, connectivity, opportunity, access, learning, the sort of things which creators do day in and day out. I mean, creators have got that in their DNA. They're looking for opportunity, but they're also looking to be inspired. They want to show and tell. And so what we've tried to do is not to have what we would call a gig economy, which is just when people come in for a gig and then yeah. take off if they get the gig or if they don't get the gig. We've actually tried to create an environment, a community, and for us now, that community is serving its, its purpose more than ever before. That community is working really hard to connect with each, each other, to talk to each other, to show their work. To so live. they're all supporting themselves, yeah. each other as well, they're pulling together. Exactly. So I think if you've got a community, you've got lots of interactions going on within it. It's not just like you're a job posting board. Because obviously if you're just posting jobs and there ain't too many jobs up there, you don't have a business model. So we felt um, it was very important from day one, really, to build a community. So one of the ways that we're keeping the lights on is to ensure that that community interaction can go on, that there's always beautiful, inspirational work on the site, and also working around some social purpose projects, which we can touch on in a moment. And also we have to shift our business approach to our brands to make sure that our brands are still coming on too. Yeah, well, that's actually a really good point. Like, is there a need for you? Is there a need to pivot or adapt your business? Are you finding that and how you work? Very much so. So we've had to shift away from any experiential type event marketing activations, which a lot of our projects were around. We work with all the Hollywood studios from Paramount to Disney to, to Warner's to um, Universal more, and, and MGM, etc. And for instance, we worked on the Bond movie and produce around about 4,000 beautiful creative assets for the studios to use around the release of the film that's been pushed back so a lot of those of things have changed so anything in that space has moved away so we're having to pivot our business in terms of talking to our brand partners about the sort of things you mentioned as well Maria you need to keep a presence during times of economic recession or troubled times those brands which literally disappear from marketing altogether, they have to recapture that ground when they move back in again. So it's far better to keep an always on presence with some sort of sensible, sensitive, in tone, in tune, creative content strategy. 
that's actually really powerful. I think that's the message that a lot of people feel that um, brands, they want to hear for a number of reasons. You know, we need to see the economy keep spinning. We need brands to, for their sake and for ours, I guess, because you look at the marketing teams, if they pull back the spend, that means they're pulling budgets from there. And that's a huge concern for their livelihood. And then of course, for to your point, you're 1 million content creators. But then I guess if you've got a movie, you can't do that. Is there anything else they can do or is it just that? Exactly. That equation? Yeah, I think that's a really good question, Maria. I think what, what people don't want to see brands doing is go out and test drive a BMW or an Audi or anything else, because you can't. Um, you don't want to see brands pushing people just to go out and buy, 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 and sort of not appreciating the the complete you know, fear that's going on. I mean, I think we should call it physical distancing, not social distancing. I think actually we need to be more socially connected it's amazing. than ever before. Yes. It amazes me that the WHO, and I can talk about the UN in a moment, because we've just launched an amazing project with the United Nations, but I think that this need for social connectivity has never been greater. There are a lot of people living in very physically isolated situations, fearing fearful, fear of death, fear of loss of income, fear of home, fear of loss of friendships, fear of you know, mental stimulation, fear of social connectivity. Right now, there's a huge amount that brands could be doing, I think, to step into that space of you view this as almost a recalibration of humanity. Some good things could really come out of this lockdown. Think about what we could be doing around connecting with people, spending more time with our families, although I think divorces might go up too. <laughs> um, I'm yes. not sure, but there's all kinds of people talking about that as well. Um, so I think there are positive things that can come out of this. Brands should be looking at the learning that you could do in this, this kind of this time of enforced entrapment at home. Use that time positively. I mean, the, you know, the keep fit you can do at home is incredible. You don't need to be a member of an expensive gym. You can do very, really good workouts at home. You can do everything from house party to Zoom meetings to WhatsApp video chats. There's great ways of connecting with your family. So as a brand, I talk about learning around social connectivity. I'd also think that brands should be doing something around pushing out sensitive content about that humanity piece and also really maybe reinforcing that charitable activation too. It's a good time for brands to be seen to be doing good. You know, if you're a brand and you've got your corporate social responsibility budgets, activate those now. That's brilliant. That's, a, that's I think, really powerful point of it there. Um, can I ask you, um, I, what, like, are you seeing, like, you've talked to us through about how businesses are adapting. What, um, what work are you doing around social purpose? So um, we've always believed that social purpose is very much in our DNA. In our DNA is creative collaboration. And um, we believe that creators are your great natural influences in the world. Creators tend to shape the way we feel about everything. They can dictate where we want to live, what we wear, what we, what we watch, what we listen to, what we eat, we know what's in, what's not, and what's not in, etc. So yeah. you've got this incredibly powerful community of creators who can shape the way that people feel about things. They also, I think, can really help generate creative work to support the United Nations goals, whatever those goals may be around climate change, black rights, women's rights, inclusivity around the LGBT, excuse me, yep. LGBTQ plus community. Well, no, no. <coughs> I should have got some water. Um, so I think that there's a huge amount this community can do in that social purpose piece. And in the past, we've worked with um, people like Cara Delevingne to support her New Hope Animal Sanctuary. We've worked with Michael Kinakanuka to support Charity Water. We've worked with Universal Music Groups to actually support um, Art Against Nice. And at the moment, we've just launched an incredible global call out from the United Nations. So the United Nations, and I've been directly on the phone to them, it's very sobering, actually, quite worrying. They're really, really concerned about how long this is going to run for. They need to get key messaging from the World Health Organization out to everyone, everywhere. They need to know that people are actually taking the steps required to know how to stop the spread of coronavirus. 
And Are you looking for help and support with that? Is there anything the community absolutely, we have here absolutely. can do? So what, so what the UN, UN have done is they've asked if we could be the official platform hosting all of the creative content that they want through their global call out to actually okay. inspire creators in every corner of the world to produce creative work around one of their six core messages that they're trying to communicate to the world. Excuse me. So it's a really, really important brief. This for me is a time when the whole industry should lean in. This yes. without agenda, without ownership issues, without conflict of interest in terms of competitive platforms or communities or goals or aspirations. This is a call out for humanity. And I know that's quite a heavy topic to be talking about at 9.20 on, on a Wednesday morning. On the 1st of April, and this isn't, a, this isn't April Fool's Day either, guys. No, um, no This is no. Super, super serious. There is a real requirement from us collectively within our industry to lean in, help produce United Nations creative content that they want. So we launched with them yesterday. We've already had, and I can have a quick look, I think over a thousand pieces of creative work that have come in from all over the world, from people who just want to support this. And we only launched just over 30, 30 hours ago. So we expect to get possibly, certainly thousands, possibly tens of thousands of pieces of creative work. They're then going to sit in a publicly available portal for everyone to use. Health authorities, educational establishments, governments, media owners, media partners, brands, and the public at large to flush and flood creative content through their news feed, through their marketing channels to get this important messaging out. That's incredible work. Well done. Thank and you. then like from, I guess we can do an ask for everybody here. Once you have that creative, we can all access it and Absolutely. we should all share it. Is there any key points that um, you find, there's six points you said, is there any of the key ones that, is the there one anything we that, haven't heard, like wash your hands? Um, a lot of, what, what they, what's really lovely is they want to build in this lovely kind of humanistic piece to it too. So people, clearly the messaging from the WHO is very much about the health and the hygiene, the physical distancing, etc. But they also want to build in some beautiful humanity pieces around it too, which is around solidarity for the world. And actually, if you think about it, this is the first time the entire world is fighting one common and sadly invisible enemy. And it's the first time that all the world, regardless of your, you know, your ethnic origin, your color, your creed, your sexual orientation, your faith, your location, it doesn't matter. And you know, th this is affecting everyone. The UN are terrified about the impact it's going to have on countries like South America, where you know, you've got overcrowding, six people in a home, no access to running water, no access to soap or antibacterial hand wash. Think about the impact on Africa too. But we're just seeing what it's doing to Northern Europe and yeah. to, to China. But when it starts getting into those other territories, this is going to be unbelievably, unbelievably difficult to control. So anything we can do now to get some of that messaging out is really important. Maya, that's really, really quite like it's emotional, but it's powerful. Yeah. And I no. think well done and the work Must you're admit, doing. I cried a few tears over the last week or so, um, but the content that's coming in is beautiful. Um, I can show you know the link. It's just on talenthouse.com. You won't be able to see the work yet until we move it from today, and we're going to be filtering through that. All the work will be United Nations approved, and we'll sit in a separate gallery for everyone to access. So please do look at it, use it. It's free to download. Great. Well, I'll get the link off you when I contact. I would say thank you to everybody. I'll just make sure we all see that. Thank, and thank I just you so much. Know, to your point that you've said all along, you know, this time it's quite, it's a pandemic, it's critical, it's all of these things, but we're at home and we're looking to be real about it and we're looking to do our best and we are looking for something beautiful to warm us. And I think the fact that you've got warming messages like solidarity in there, it's beautiful. And I know making iconic creative at this time is, it's it's the wartime iconic creative. So I think that's, that's really interesting yeah. and important. So well done. It's really true if you think about the old Kitchener poster, your country needs you, and Rosie the Riveter, sort of getting women out there to start working in the forces, etc. Um, it's a real opportunity to use creative content, the power of creative content, the power of the people that make it, 
creative as influencers as a real sweet spot, real proper authentic artistic influence. Let's use that opportunity to flush the world with positive messaging, which is going to save the world too. Well, I love it. Thank you. And I think that's the whole point. We're going to move on to Scott now. We're going to talk about really the asset test of purpose and the role of influencers and who can execute these messages the best, whether it's, you know, bringing those messages out or the entertainment, whichever side. But thank you, Mai. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.